Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone. For drivers who want to get the most out of their cars, it's Bridgestone or nothing. Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by Hyundai. Experience the 2011 Hyundai Sonata today at HyundaiSonata.com. Yep, it's me, Peter DiLorenzo, the one and only auto extremist, bringing you another episode of AutoLine Daily, this time for Monday, October 10th, 2011. I'm filling in for John, who is wrestling with a bout of laryngitis. Here's what's happening so far today in the automotive industry. According to automotive analysts, the stock prices for car companies and their suppliers are too cheap right now. Short sellers, who were betting that those stocks would drop, have driven down prices. But car sales and automakers' profits continue to climb. Bloomberg quotes one analyst who says that automotive stock prices could rock. However, analysts also warn that GM's and Ford's unfunded pension liabilities are a real concern for investors. Automotive suppliers used to hate working with the Detroit 3 and loved working with Toyota and Honda. But now that's starting to change. Toyota is pressuring its suppliers in Japan to cut prices because of the soaring value of the yen. That has hammered the stock prices of Japanese suppliers. And American suppliers tell Autoline Daily that Honda is starting to behave like the Detroit 3 used to. Instead of Honda's spirit of cooperation, they say now it's far more confrontational. Automakers are predicting car sales to continue to grow, but investors are still wary of the industry because of the weak economy. However, that slow growth is helping automakers keep costs down. According to the Wall Street Journal, after a strong first half, prices for raw materials are falling. Hot rolled coil steel has dropped nearly $200 a ton since April. Aluminum is down a quarter, while copper and lead are down a third from their 2011 peaks. And if commodity prices continue to fall in 2012 compared to this year, car makers can expect even greater savings. Facing stiff competition, Ford will introduce an updated version of the popular transit van for the 2012 model year. According to Wards, this Euro-flavored workhorse will be powered by a new 2.2-liter Duratorque diesel engine. It's available in four different flavors, 100, 125, 140, and 155 horsepower versions. All of them meet Euro 5 emissions. Interestingly, the 2012 Transit will be offered in either front or rear wheel drive. A 4x4 is also available. Beyond this impressive spread of choices, the van comes in six different body styles ranging from a basic cargo hauler to a bus to a chassis cab. According to the Wall Street Journal, the world's oldest running car was just sold at auction. The Dédéon Bouton et Trépado do a do, or however the hell you would pronounce it, is, you guessed it, French. But perhaps what isn't so obvious is that this buggy is steam powered. Interestingly, it participated in the world's first automobile race way back in 1887. With the engine on the boil, literally, it hit a top speed of 37 miles an hour. All told, it brought in more than $4.6 million at an RM auction in Hershey, Pennsylvania. That's a good bit more than the $2 million bucks it was estimated to go for. Coming up next, Autoline Daily correspondent Craig Cole takes a spin in the new Buick Regal Turbo. What if we always settled for the first thing that came along? Then we'd never have gotten here. Introducing the Sonata Hybrid from Hyundai. I'll be honest, I didn't want to like the Buick Regal Turbo. There's just something about GM dumping Europe's sloppy seconds in America's lap that doesn't sit that well with me. But then I drove it for a few days and that changed everything. This Buickified Opel Insignia is one damn good car. Especially with this. It's a six-speed stick. And here's a fun factoid for you. The last time Buick offered a vehicle with a manual transmission was way back in 1990 on the Skylark. Do you remember that car? Hmm, it's probably best you don't. The Regal is a global product for GM. This particular car was built in Rüsselsheim, Germany. But last spring, production for North America was moved to Oshawa, Ontario, up in Canada. Adding more international flair to it, 
The engine is sourced from right here in the good old US of A, and the transmission, like just about everything else these days, is made in China. Speaking of the powertrain, under the hood we've got a 2-liter turbocharged Ecotec engine. With all the bells and whistles like direct fuel injection and variable valve timing, it delivers 220 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque, and at least for me, some big surprises. About a year ago I drove an early build Regal with this same engine in it and I was not very impressed at all. It felt underpowered and it had some pretty severe NVH issues. That thing vibrated like a wood chipper, but thankfully GM smoothed out all of its rough edges and the production version is creamier than frozen custard. It's also efficient. Window sticker is 20 miles per gallon around town, 32 on the highway, and according to the digital readout, I've been averaging about 30 miles per gallon on mixed driving, and I haven't been easy on this car. The 2011 Buick Regal Turbo is stylish, comfortable, practical, and fun to drive. Yep, I just called it fun to drive. What's the last Buick you could say that about? Certainly wasn't the Skylark. Base price for this CXL trim level is about $29,000, and our test car is loaded up with about six grand worth of options, which brings the total sticker price to just about $35,000, which, for everything you're getting, by today's standards, really isn't that bad of a price. Nice work, Craig. And that's a show. As always, thanks for joining us today. Until next time, I'm Peter DiLorenzo, the auto extremist, signing off.